Mr. Spiros Papaevtimiu, she's in charge of this panel, the president of HAE. So Spiros, you will introduce. By the way, uh, the rest of the panelists, they should come to the uh, panel. Mr. Alexander, uh, sorry, Athanasios Yagumas. Uh, Mr. Mavros is not with us today. And Mr. Andreas Borgias, please, both of you, join us. Okay, Spiro, you're in charge. Please, let's have all, let's see, let's all sit here. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm oh. glad to uh, be part of this, uh, this panel. I don't think that's gonna take half an hour. It's, uh, we had the last uh, time notice from Mr. Mavros. He's not, uh, he will not be able to join us, even though he was with us in the morning, but uh, uh, something happened and he cannot be with us. Uh, so just the three of us. For, uh, for the panel, uh, it gives us some more time for the discussion. So, uh, I will start directly with some questions about, you know, the topic is very interesting. It talks about uh, movement from fossil fuels to renewables, the, the, the so-called transition, and also talking about challenges in, in uh, the new ecosystem. It's called electricity ecosystem. We talked a lot today about uh, gas and, and, and renewable gases and, and green molecules, whatever, but, uh, uh, if you want to move from uh, uh, from fossil fuels to renewables, electrification is, is mandatory. Okay, so uh, let me start uh, with uh, uh, Professor Dagumas. I keep the academic role first. Uh, so, Thanasis, given the rising costs uh, in both the wholesale electricity market and for the end consumers, what are the key challenges that the current Greek uh, energy system is facing? What strategies could be implemented to address and mitigate these challenges? I thank you, Spiros, for, uh, for the introduction and for inviting me for this important event. Uh, as you know, uh, as a regulator, we have uh, we are very sensitive on competition issues, so uh, we follow very uh, strictly all the developments in uh, wholesale and retail markets uh, because uh, by the end, the energy cost is the most important uh, in the energy transition. It's very important uh, to mention that uh, over the last years uh, within Greece, we had a tremendous progress in the penetration of uh, renewables in the green transition. Uh, so this is uh, already depicted in uh, the wholesale and retail prices. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it's also clear that uh, the operation of the market uh, creates price signals for investments, especially uh, for, storage, for storage assets in the peak hours. Uh, so the main challenges uh, that um, remain uh, for our uh, system is following the fast penetration of renewables, uh, the, the penetration of uh, needed assets like storage and the connections uh, that uh, will implement uh, our uh, system uh, to be an enabler of um, uh, energy uh, exporting in the region uh, and also elimination of the power prices uh, in the medium term. Okay, uh, it's an interesting approach and it's, I think it's quite challenging for, for the authority overall. Uh, Mr. Borghias, uh, uh, you are coming from uh, United States, you have a huge background in California, which is a very interesting uh, state, maybe one state that you know everything about uh, electricity and renewables has started. So, uh, based on your experience as a former California senator, are there any key commonalities between Greece and California, or overall United States maybe, uh, in terms of energy and, and also in terms of water policy? Because it's something that we also know in Greece, the regulatory authority now is about also energy and water. And, and uh, so, uh, do, do you think that we have any commonalities that could be useful for policymakers here in Greece? Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the Chamber of Commerce and, of course, the financial sponsors of this event for hosting this forum. Uh, by way of background, um, I spent uh, 15 years in elected office uh, in the U.S., uh, most recently as a California state senator, and then had the honor of joining the Unis Energy Group uh, after public life uh, as the CEO of the Greece Africa Power Electrical Interconnection Project and uh, more recently as a member, a board member of Unis uh, Green Energy. So you ask a very interesting question. Are there commonalities between 
California or the US and Greece in the energy space and the water space. California is known, I think everyone could agree, it's known for innovation. Uh, it's known for a number of startups and the, 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 as a leader in, uh, in green energy technology and uh, policy. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist this coin a little bit. Yes, there's a lot to learn of, about energy in the way California does things. I think there's a lot more to learn from California's failures. And what I mean by that is that we have tried certain things and we've done them sometimes okay, oftentimes not so good. And let me, t it kind of falls into a theme. And the theme of California's failures, in my opinion, uh, and I was the chairman of the Senate Agriculture Committee uh, when I was in office, so we dealt with these things regularly. But there was a, uh, uh, there was a, a, a famous saying by an, an American author named Mark Twain. And Mark Twain, uh, said that uh, uh, whiskey is for drinking and water, water is for fighting. That tells you a lot about how California has dealt with water-related uh, issues. But our failures, I think, are at the nexus points of policy um, in terms of, so between policy and uh, industry, within the context of market realities. So to answer your question, uh, Governor Newsom, the current governor of California, said that California is going to electrify in 10 years. That is just simply not going to happen. We have not made the investments in the infrastructure needed for this. We've been living off our grandparents' uh, infrastructure investments in California. And so when you put out a statement masquerading as policy that you're going to electrify California in 10 years, that's just simply not realistic. And we've seen it in the marketplace where you have uh, folks that would normally be buying electric vehicles are slowing down their purchasing patterns and instead going back to hybrids because there's not enough reliable charging stations in California. So once again, you have industry and policymakers not integrating and accommodating market realities. Let me get, let me, let me get to water. Water, I think, is uh, a perfect example of one of California's failures is because we have a centralized uh, water system and we have experienced drought uh, for, for decades and having to deal with uh, the drought-related matters. So one of the things that we have been experimenting with uh, is how do we decentralize our water uh, dynamic? So instead of having a complete reliance on the uh, delivery system that currently exists, we have shown that that is not something that is sustainable because we lose about 40% of our water um, by virtue of subsidence and leakage. So we, if, it's, if the infrastructure is failing, then the system fails. So what about um, desalinization efforts on the coast? That, I think, is one of the things that we have been working with, and it's not unlike some of the dynamics that you have here in Greece. We know that water uh, is, is problematic, and we see it especially in the islands. Uh, cycladics, where you have to bring in uh, water by, by boat. And Eunice Energy Group, I think, has a very practical approach to this water issue, the decentralization of water. And that could be very uh, easily remedied uh, through uh, the installation of moderately sized wind turbines supporting a desalinization program uh, that can service the needs of the cycladics. Now, Eunice happens to be one of the only developers and manufacturers of mid-size, small and mid-size uh, uh, turbines here in Greece. That, to me, is a perfect example of how to learn from California's mistakes, allowing for the regionalization of water usage so that when the boat does come with water, it's supplementing the needs of the community and the tourist base, not becoming the only source that's available to them. So these are the two examples, and I'll, and I'll conclude here, is that California's failures are when the policymakers are not integrating with industry and they're not reflective of market realities. That I think Greece can learn from California's mistakes on. To be honest, the, the water energy nexus is one of uh, maybe panels that we should have added. It's, it's, it's a crucial, crucial issue for Greece, but mm -hmm. also for the region overall. 
Uh, as you mentioned, the uh, islands are very you know, uh, prone to water, so it's, it's, it's a very important aspect. And of course, another major issue for our conference today is that it can completely be linked to, to energy. It's a completely identical idea of handling a source. It can be electrons or water, more or less the same. So talking about networks again, and, uh, and uh, coming back to, to, uh, to uh, uh, Professor Aguma, so uh, we're talking about uh, integration of renewables. It's, it's like uh, uh, something that it's, uh, everybody's talking about. And, and of course, uh, the question that comes afterwards is the stability of the electricity system. And, and uh, how uh, uh, do you see as an authority the measures that are necessary to ensure the stability of, of our grid and the reliability of our grid and, uh, uh, in, in, and keeping uh, in parallel the increase of investments in grid? Um, because we learned from uh, California, I have to tell us <laughs> a professor uh, that one of the well-known uh, uh, figures from the California uh, ISO, uh, Independent System Operator, the KISO, uh, is the duck here. That's why uh, <laughs> uh, we issue now uh, uh, as a regulator and uh, we plan to, pr to present this uh, new uh, new services for, uh, for monitoring the wholesale markets. Uh, we'll do it in uh, the events that we have here in Thessaloniki in two days. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll have real time in our website, uh, the energy mix for the day head market, the internet market, and the ISP, the, the integration system operation, where we can see the evolution, the evolution of the renewables. The duck curve, we show the duck curve and exactly the, the, the remaining net load and, and the need of, uh, of assets, storage assets in the peak time is very clear in, in, in the real time graphs. And we also show the energy surplus and the, the renewables curtailment. And we made uh, an effort to make a split between them, which comes from the system and which comes from the market operation. So the, all of them are real time in our website from the first day of the target models of almost four years data. You just choose one day, you choose a period, you choose a, a aggregate the whole period or a specific time, and you have a clear picture. Transparency is on one of the elements. So based on that, um, uh, we see that because of the vast penetration, as I mentioned, with one of renewables, we don't see the risk elements as in, in the negative side. We see it as an energy plus, as a possibility to use this surplus for specific investments. So clear for us is that it creates a role for, one is uh, 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 batteries or pumping, so it's one is storage. The second is for electrification of uh, the transportation, electric vehicles and electric uh, ports, electrifying ports. The third one has to do with a new demand, for example, like a demand from, uh, uh, from data centers that are being to implemented in Greece and very uh, consuming. And the fourth one is to electrify uh, for green hydrogen. So these four pillars are potential uh, uh, benefits from this uh, cheap uh, energy that exists in, in our area. So in that sense, all these assets with a close, very close cooperation between DSO and DSO, the TSO, DSO coordination, it's a major issue, will enhance both using the advantage we have in the area and enhancing stability in the system. To continue with that, uh, it's, you know, it's something that is declared, it's a policy de uh, declaration for Greece that we expand our grid. So Mr. Bourguias, electricity infrastructure, okay, we can call it like that technically, uh, so, any of uh, Unisys projects uh, that are uh, related to this goal, to this politically uh, already uh, 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 said uh, goal to enhance our uh, renewables on the one hand, and also keep uh, our uh, grid stable. So, do you have something, uh, any projects that uh, you are planning apart from uh, what you mentioned about small renewables or whatever that can fit in many other aspects? Uh, any projects that are related directly to the grid uh, expand? I think we have had a number of speakers today uh, highlight the fact that uh, there are limitations in Greece's national grid. Um, and I think we have to work within those realities uh, and find in ways where supplements can be contributed uh, that are beneficial to uh, Greece's agenda. Uh, obviously, the divestment from Russia and the carbon neutrality goals of the EU and the US. Uh, the problem with the grid uh, is not going to be easily solved. But the overarching uh, question is, can you contribute into 
the grid system and to end users in a way that can uh, uh, be satisfactory for the needs of the country. And frankly, the best way to do that right now, of course, is storage. And uh, uh, Eunice uh, Energy Group uh, uh, believes in this strongly. And that is why they applied for uh, support from the European Union uh, on a project called the uh, uh, uh Storage System. And that went through a, the normal PCI process out of Brussels and through the support of the Ministry of Energy and others within the Mitsotakis administration, uh, Eunice was able to submit a package and Brussels responded favorably. In fact, the results were we were ranked second in storage projects within our regional classification. So we achieved that ranking. And what this storage system will do, and it's located in northwest Greece, is that at full build out, it will be approximately 250 megawatts. Uh, which is about a, a, a thousand megawatt hours. And what this can do is help stabilize the grid system, contribute as necessary, but always have a backup supply. Um, and we're going to need to have projects like this through, throughout Greece, whether it's west or in, in Crete. Um, but I think this particular project is one that we can be proud of because the Unis Energy Group has taken the lead, and it took the lead early in this, and naturally, um, we have seen the markets respond. We're expecting that this will be about a $250 million project, both public and private funds, and completed around uh, 2026. So it's not just on the horizon, it's coming up fast. But this is an example where industry has worked with policymakers in Athens, but is clearly reflective of market realities as well as infrastructure realities to achieve a desired result. So this, is, I think, is a hallmark that shows Eunice is at the vanguard of being a, uh, an industry player with, with, with Greece. It was mentioned before also by Minister Zduku that she was very happy to say that uh, we, in COP28, we prove that uh, we have uh, a, a direct collaborations between uh, companies uh, that want to invest and make real things and also with the policymakers that really try to make regulation to help in, in any way this uh, uh, green energy transition. Uh, uh, Mr. Dagumas, the, the discussion about converting Greece to transforming Greece to, to a local energy hub or a regional energy hub is uh, ongoing. We have been discussing this in this forum for almost eight years now. And, uh, but the idea is, can we continue using uh, the business as usual approach that we have been using up to now? Uh, uh, or do we need uh, uh, to move to structural changes? Or maybe uh, to talk about wildcards in the technologies? So what do you think about that? Be careful, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, as, as I mentioned before, we made the tremendous progress in, in um, specific technologies. And uh, it is um, the role uh, of each institution, so for example, of the, of, of the ministry through the, uh, the National Climate and Energy Plan, uh, to identify the priorities of the energy policy. And this is now under a discussion that will soon be submitted. Once this is clarified, all of us, the regulator, the system operators, uh, and the companies implement this strategy to be clear in specific deadlines and specific time. So what is clear and the structure uh, we, should, uh, we should follow. Uh, we don't see uh, that uh, th there is an issue of radical changes in the policy, in the model formation, or whatever. Uh, it's uh, it's an issue of being uh, have a clear vision and step by step concrete steps uh, to move on and and as you know the regulator uh, plays a, cl a crucial role uh, based on its professionality uh, that also all institutions should follow and okay. follow. Uh, it has been mentioned a lot today, uh, Mr. Burgess, uh, uh, the term collaboration between neighbors, neighboring countries, and okay the forum is about. Southeast Europe, but of course uh, this includes the Northern Africa part. So uh, I would like you to conclude with telling us if Eunice uh, uh, has any plans uh, about interconnections and interconnections of large scale, meaning connecting countries and, and in this way making corridors. We heard about uh, uh, the corridor of gas. Now we are also talking a lot about corridors of moving electricity uh, among countries, among uh, continents. So uh, what's your, your, your take on that? Well, as the uh, uh, 
as the CEO of, of Greece Africa Power. For those that may not know, uh, Greece Africa Power is a proposed project whereby uh, electricity would be generated, solar electricity would be generated in Egypt, and it would be transmitted underwater to uh, southeastern Crete. It's, it's over a long distance with extraordinary depths, but it has a promising uh, uh, relationship, uh, not just between Greece and Egypt, but of course, uh, allowing uh, Greece to emerge as an energy leader uh, within southeastern Europe and uh, in helping Europe uh, in, as a whole. So this project uh, is, has gone through some evolutions, and I think that is a good thing because, you know, uh, what we've realized is that the grid limitations um, have to be adjusted around, and that is why uh, the, uh, the, the, the evolution of the gap is going to orient mostly into the hydrogen offtake opportunities, and it could be phased in and built out over time. Uh, but the southeastern Crete has emerged as an extraordinary location point uh, by folks in Brussels and beyond. Uh, for example, uh, the European um, Union uh, and other partners designated nine areas uh, within Europe as hydrogen valleys. Well, coincidentally, one of those areas is in, uh, in Crete with our significant offtake opportunities over there. Uh, and uh, Eunice Energy also was a recipient of two grants, European Union pilot programs, uh, for the development of hydrogen in this area. Now, these are extraordinary developments. Where, we're, where, where we face challenges is being first sometimes means you have to do even more work, especially in allowing the, for the legislation to be created and the regulation and land acquisition, et cetera. But once it's, once it's uh, implemented, the partnerships between Egypt and Greece will allow for an entire new sector of industry to be uh, developed in this, in this particular area. And that offtake could be helpful in agriculture, shipping, and let's not forget, Suda Bay is, is right on the island. And a lot of the watercraft, be it American or others, uh, will be looking at hydrogen uh, as consumers. So there's a natural uh, there's a natural development and compatibility for uh, that region to serve as a hydrogen hub, and the gap will be servicing that electricity need without impacting the grid. And that's why I think we earn the support of the Ministry of Energy. We have a letter of support from them uh, that will allow us to, con to, uh, to submit for the PCI in the hybrid category next year. And we're hopeful that we will be competitive because the demands are real and we have a solution. Thank you. Thank you both for the discussion. Thank you all for watching us. Thank you.